Hello everybody, what is going on? Jimmy here back with another video. Hope you all are doing well. Today, my friends, I wanna talk about a game that came out a couple days ago, and you definitely know what it is. It's Xenoblade Chronicles 3, because if you're following me, you know, you know the truth, right? The truth is that the Xenoblade games are some of the best games of all time, and although I was not that fond of two, I can admit that it definitely had some high points, and it's definitely not a terrible game. It just, I feel like for a Xenoblade game, it was not that great, but you know, comparing it to like Pokemon, it's better than like any Pokemon game that's came out in like the last 10 years, but comparing it to other Xenoblade games, it just felt weak to me. But that's not the case with Xenoblade Chronicles 3. I have to say, this is probably the strongest start to any Xenoblade game I have ever played in my entire life. And this is coming from someone who's played all of them right here. So that's what we're going to be talking about today, my first impressions of Xenoblade Chronicles 3. I just wanted to get my annoying voice off of the uh, video for one second and just let you hear how great Xenoblade Chronicles 3 soundtrack really is. Uh, yeah, so basically, um, this game is absolutely amazing. Like, I mean, seriously, I haven't played a game this good in a very, very long time. I'm so freaking excited to see where this game goes. Like, there's so many unanswered questions, so many interesting things. Like, I guess I probably should have said this before I uh, got you guys this far into the video. But yes, we are going to be discussing some, uh, I guess you could say spoilers for previous Xenoblade games. Because I'm going to talk about a couple theories I have and different things. And we're going to see kind of how they play out. This video is kind of a first impression video coming from like I said a longtime fan so I've played them all I kind of know what to expect from these games to a certain degree and I have some theories on what's going on here first of all I think something's going on with uh, Noah's blade there's no way it looks that close to the Minardo something's going on there and I'm not exactly sure what it is and I honestly would love to see what ends up happening with that because I feel like especially because on the DLC um, little image that they released it shows uh, Shulk's blade, the real Monardo, and then it shows, you know, the other blades and different things of the other protagonists, and it just really makes me feel like, is Shulk somehow connected to Noah? Like, you know, obviously if you experience the ending of Xenoblade Chronicles 1, I'm not going to explain what happens there, because that's way too far into spoilers, but basically, there's certain things that lead me to believe that I don't even know if that's even possible, but there's also a part of me that thinks to myself, it's more than possible. Just like the queens, they have to be Nia and Melia. It, it like has to be, 100%. And I wonder how that's going to be tied in. I mean, there's no way that the queens are not Melia and Nia. There's no way. They have to be. I mean, they have to be. Their designs, their everything about it, it's like a one-to-one. -one. It just looks like a revamp. It just looks like some kind of a time period in the future almost. So I don't understand what's going on with that either. But I do understand one thing. The combat, the gameplay, the music, the characters, everything so far in this game is everything that I want out of a Xenoblade. And it is by far, by a long shot, the best game I've played this year and probably the best game I've played the last couple years because, you know, it's been a long time since we've had a game this great. I'd say this game is truly, like how far I'm in right now, I'm close to about 10 hours in right now, truly one of the best opening, like this is still like for a Xenoblade game, like. 10 hours in is like still completely towards the beginning of the game. So this is like one of the best openings for a video game I've ever played my entire life. I love the cast of characters. I mean, my God, the game, it's just absolutely amazing. They perfected the combat. It seems like a nice bridge between the first game and the second game, which I felt felt a little too stiff, the combat did. They kind of did a good point in kind of making it feel fluid, yet also retaining that stiffness, but not to a degree that it's like too stiff, if you know what I'm saying. But... I love where we're going with this series, and I'm so excited to see how this game ends. Another big question I have, I guess, is how long is this game? Is this game a 70-hour game? Is it a 100-hour game, or is it only 50 hours? You know what I'm saying? Like, people on how long to beat have beaten it in 50-some hours. I already checked, but the thing is, that's not very accurate because a lot of people speedrun it, so we have to wait longer for how long to beat to get more accurate as more people input, um, you know, their time frames on there. I'll be sure to... Uh, put mine on there but yeah I think the thing is this it's very very simple to me I, I think this game's going to be like at least 70 hours if you know people are getting it done real fast in 50 I'm assuming it's gonna be at least 70 to 100 that's kinda like my guess here and plus we got that DLC coming which is probably gonna involve Shulk and some of the other protagonists I mean I'm so so excited for where this game goes and basically how it all turns out in this I can't even talk 
how it all turns out for Noah and the rest of the team. I'm a big fan of Noah as a protagonist. I think he does a good job of being, um, you know, a better version of what I think they were trying to do with Rex. Not saying Rex was a horrible protagonist, but he really was not a very great one either. He felt too much like a child, and even though Noah's, like, I think supposed to be, like, 10 years old, uh, I don't know maybe if they age differently from, like, Rex and them because Rex was younger looking for sure, but the thing is, is he was older than 10. It's been confirmed that Rex was actually supposed to be 15 years old. And I think the reason why Noah and the rest of this team seem so much older is because they're like, you know, not like normal like people, they're made in different things, so I think it's a totally different process and that means that their aging is a totally different process from previous Xenoblade protagonists and how they would age in different things. Because Noah looks to be much older than 10 years old, and obviously you can tell he's not 10 years old. He's probably closer to 10 years old in the flashbacks, so as you can see, that's definitely not 100% something that we understand just yet. It'll be exciting to see if they go into more of that detail, and it'll also be exciting to see, does our cast of characters die off? Do they go to their homecoming and do they all die? Or are they now seriously sticking to their guns and not ever going back, and they're going to try to fight for the greater good. We're going to see how this story goes because I have a strange feeling that a few of them are going to be loyal to their colonies even though their colonies have now actually turned their backs on them, which is a crazy plot twist that I was not expecting and I really, really, really enjoyed that little stunt they pulled there. I thought that was really cool. Did not expect that to happen. I thought we'd be doing missions for the colonies like literally the entire game. I did not think for one second we weren't going to be doing that. It did not dawn on me that the other half of the uh, cast that they showed off like a couple months ago was from the other side and that they'd come together. That was all new to me. It's like I went into it blind because I forgot because all that stuff came out so long ago. I didn't realize those were on our side. I knew they were going to be characters that meant something, but I had not realized that they were going to be part of the main cast. I kind of tried not to watch too many trailers, kind of tried to avoid everything I could for this game because I love this series and I like going to it kind of blindly. So that's kind of why it was such a shock to me when like, you know, half this other team joins up on our team and the whole combination of people to make like those giant machine looking beings, that was really interesting. Kind of derpy, but also really, really cool if that makes sense. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I guess I have nothing really bad to say about this game. I really don't. There's nothing yet so far that's really made me mad. I'll definitely have a full review out of the game when I'm done playing it. I just wanted to give you guys like a full first impressions kind of look on the game because this is how I'm feeling about it right now. I'm currently playing on hard. I do feel like hard is kind of easy. But that's not really a criticism of the game, that's just, you know, maybe because I've played so many Xenoblade games, I'm just getting the hang of it. That's why I can't really consider that like a negative, you know what I'm saying? Maybe hard for a lot of people who aren't diehards of the series. Maybe hard would be difficult for them, I have no idea. But yeah, I can't really count that as a negative, but I can say it as like something to note, I guess I can word that as. But yeah, everybody, that's basically all I got for you all in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching again, and as always, Jimmy out of here.